You're unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Welcome back to another unbelievable day of waves with unbelievable physics. Today we're going to do a really brief introduction to some of these wave interactions that are really cool that uh, produce some pretty interesting phenomenon and, and some pretty unexpected results. I'm going to go through these really quickly. I just want you to know the basic idea of each of these interactions. And in class, we'll go a lot more in depth, and I'll show you a lot of examples of these things in your everyday life. The first thing I want to talk about is the Doppler effect. Now, the simplest definition of the Doppler effect is the, uh, well, I don't even know how to spell it, but you'll probably recognize the sound. That's when a, a train or a car is driving by. As it's approaching you, you get a really high-pitched sound. And then as it passes by you and is traveling away from you, you get a really low pitch sound. And the reason for that is that as the object is traveling and creating the sound, you get uh, the waves kind of bunch up in the front, creating a higher frequency. And then when it passes by you, the waves are more spread out. And so it's a lower frequency. There's less waves per second. And I'll show you some animations and some examples of that in class. But that's the simple answers. The Doppler effect is, you know, that sound, the, the, the frequency changing in a sound due to the, sh the changing in the velocity, or not the change of velocity, but the, because of the velocity um, of the object that's creating that sound. Now we can calculate the Doppler effect by using this equation right here. And this is, it looks pretty scary when you look at it, but really when we break it down into pieces, it's really not too bad. All it is is that at the beginning we have our observed frequency here, uh, meaning what do you actually hear? What is the observer here? And that's going to be equal to this little quantity over here where we take the actual frequency, meaning like a, a car's horn or a fire engine's um, you know, siren, if it weren't moving, what is the actual frequency that it's producing? And we take the actual frequency and multiply it by this little ratio. The V here and V here is the same V. That's the speed of the wave. So when we're dealing with sound waves, that's you know the 340-ish meters per second. That's how fast the wave is moving. This V on the top is the speed of the observer. So how fast is the observer moving? And the V on the bottom is how fast the source is moving. So we have the speed of the waves, and then we have the speed of the observer that's listening to the sound or watching those waves. And then the V source is the how fast the source is moving, so the fire engine or the car. And I have that written down right here. And if you really need to write all that down, you can pause this slide, but I'm just going to move on. Now, reflection is another cool phenomenon. It's when a wave will bounce back after hitting some sort of surface or a barrier. Now, you guys are familiar with this because every day you look at yourself in the mirror. And the way that the mirror works is that light reflects off of your face or off of your body, whatever you're looking at. So it reflects off of your face. It bounces into the mirror and reflects off of the mirror back into your eyes. And that what enables you to see yourself in the mirror is the fact that these waves are bouncing back and forth. Um, now, the simple um, way of thinking about the law of reflection is that whatever the angle is that the wave is coming into the barrier, we call that the angle of incidence. So whatever this angle is as it's coming in, that's going to be equal to the angle of reflection that's coming out. Now, this little dotted line, we call this the normal line. It's an imaginary line that doesn't actually exist in real life, but it's a way of setting up a, a, the perpendicular. Remember the word normal is perpendicular. And so it's perpendicular to the surface, and we just measure the angle from, from wherever the wave actually is coming in. We measure the angle from the perpendicular spot, and that's called the angle of incidence, and it's always equal to the angle of reflection. So we can tell the steeper that this were to come in, the steeper it would go out. Or I guess, depending on your reference frame, you might say that's a shallower angle, but that's, anyway. The steeper it goes in, the steeper it comes out. Now, refraction is the bending of a wave as it travels from one medium to another. And remember that the word medium, that means from one material. So the easiest way of thinking of this is, uh, for any of you guys that have ever been swimming in you know, a pool, 
A lot of people have a little pond skimmer. It's that really big stick with the net on the end. And if you stick that little, the pond skimmer in the water to try to pull out some of the, the leaves or whatever else is in your pool, you notice it kind of looks like the pole is bent. Now, the pole doesn't actually bend when you put it in the water, but because water is a different medium than air, as the light is traveling, you know, the light reflects off of the pole, and as it travels through the water, when it reaches the air, the light bends. So it makes us think that the actual pole is bent when, if, when in all actuality the pole isn't actually bent. And so this is kind of what it would look like, is that as a wave is coming in, as it transfers, this dotted line right here would mean if it just went straight and didn't bend at all. But as you're going from air to water, it bends right here and it bends down. And there is an equation that we could use to quantify this, but for the sake of our high school physics class, we're actually not going to quantify it. We just want to understand this concept of how refraction works. And this is the same thing a lot of you guys have, have probably seen, um, you know, light go through a little glass prism, and you notice how the rainbow comes out. That's exactly what's happening, is that as we have the white light or the sun's light that comes in, each color of the rainbow refracts a different amount when it goes into glass. And that's what causes this rainbow to come out, is that it refracts, that the purple refracts a lot more than the red does. So those waves actually start to separate and, and you see a rainbow. We could go vice versa. If we took an entire rainbow and we shined it in at the perfect angles, we would get a white light that comes out, which is pretty awesome. Now, diffraction sounds a lot like refraction, except, you know, with a D in front instead of an R. Refraction and diffraction. Diffraction is similar to refraction where it's a bending of wave, but the difference is instead of traveling from one medium to another, it's just bending around a barrier. This is what allows you to hear people that are in the other room. I mean, obviously, there's a lot more phenomenon out there, like sound can travel through a wall. But in general, if there were a nice big brick wall, you could still hear someone on the other side of the wall because the sound waves can bend around that brick wall. Uh, light waves are also diffracted, um, and we'll talk more about that in class, and I'll show you some examples of, of light that actually can from coming out. Uh, and this little graphic right here is just the same thing, showing that if we have two little bars, then this little spot right here kind of creates a nice little curved wave. So we can actually take a straight wave that are lines, and by setting up two little barriers, we can turn it into a round wave that's coming out. So no, that uh, it's not a permanent thing, so that the, these waves still kind of continue on. Uh, a nice analogy that I like to use is kind of like ghosts. You know, we see in the movies all the time, the ghosts will, if you walk through a ghost, uh, for the moment that you're overlapping, there's this interaction where you, but you kind of just pass right through each other as if nothing changed. And this is just a, a simple little graphic to kind of show you what it looks like. We have here this solid black line and a dotted, the small dotted black line. Those are two waves, and if those two waves come together, you get this big dotted line. This is what it will actually look like to a person, is these big black lines. On the other hand, if we have a crest of this dotted, of wave number two, and this trough of wave number one, because the trough is deeper than the crest of wave two, we kind of get a smaller trough here. It's kind of like wave number two canceled out a part of wave number one, so we get a small trough. And vice versa here, where we have the big crest from wave one and a small trough from wave two, they kind of cancel out to get a small crest for uh, the resulting wave. And that's interference. And we can get some really, really cool effects that we will talk about in uh, more depth tomorrow in class. Make sure you do uh, quiz number two that is online right now so that you can get credit for watching this video. And I will see you guys in the morning.